Um, hello, I am Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and uh, this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me from the state of Michigan, Justin Roebuck, Ottawa County Clerk Register. And we're, uh, we're talking about some uh, questions from the perspective of the voter. And here's the next one. What should the voter do if the road, let me try that again. <laughs> what should the voter do if the voter registration system fails? That's a great question. So we have a pretty robust voter registration system in the state of Michigan. It's tied to the driver license file in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, Know, considered pretty accurate and up to date in terms of you know comparably to other states that don't necessarily have that uh, connection. So when you move in Michigan and update your driver's license, your voter registration is automatically updated. Excellent. So that system is what creates the data and is tied to our electronic poll books within uh, each precinct in in the state. Um, so there's a couple of things. If the voter registration system fails on election day, uh, we have a number of different backup scenarios. So um, each county in the state of Michigan has a server backup of the voter registration data. So it is on a, you know, a secure live internet system, um, a live database, I guess, that is in real time on election day, which certainly um, creates a more secure environment for our same day registration process. Mm -hmm. However, the county does have a server backup of the voter file. Um, oh, within updated. the county itself? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, so it's a, uh, a, um, there's copies. Well, anyway, please, please continue. Yes. I want to interrupt, please. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We, we basically replicate a copy daily of the voter data within our county. Excellent. So if we were to have a system failure on election day or the day before, um, we do have that, you know, most recent backup um, electronically. Mm -hmm. But what we also do in addition to that is ensure that every precinct has a paper copy of the poll book. So this is the old school mm -hmm. version where, you know, a lot of people are, are used to seeing that, you know, your name gets highlighted or checked off of a list and um, in a binder. Uh, basically, when you go in and, and vote. So that paper copy is provided to every single precinct as well. So if there's a, a, a more granular failure of the voter registration system in the electronic poll book uh, within a given precinct or maybe a jurisdiction, um, there is that paper copy of the poll book as well. Excellent. So you have multiple redundancies. Um, and, and maybe did, uh, maybe a different kind or, or a perceived failure if I go in and I, um, I want to vote in person and they can't find me, or maybe my name is misspelled or some other sure. variation of a kind of a soft failure. Um, would they, uh, would the poll worker be able to fall back to that paper record, uh, assuming maybe it's perhaps different or it has you know, more accurate information? Absolutely. So there's okay. a couple of things there. If a voter isn't appearing on a poll list and maybe you, you know that that's a mistake or that's um, some you know, concern of the voters, we do have the paper poll book that the um, you know election worker could certainly refer to, but what we also recommend is that immediately the election worker contact the local jurisdiction clerk. They have access again to that statewide voter database, and we can simply um, you know review information that's not necessarily accessible in the precincts. Because remember, our poll books are not connected to the internet. Obviously, that's purposeful that the poll books that are in the precinct are not actually live on the internet. Um, but that local jurisdiction clerk can then uh, connect uh, on a broader level and, and verify more information and more data. But Michigan's system since 2018 allows for same day registration. So for example, even if I am not, for some reason, not appearing on the poll book in the precinct where I live, the voter does have the ability to re-register or register to vote on the same day. Mm -hmm. So that's done in the local uh, city or township clerk's office. And that really, that process, you know, we've only gone through a few elections since that was passed. It was a constitutional amendment that was passed in 2018. Okay. Um, but what we've seen is that it's really uh, eliminated the need for a lot of provisional ballots in mm -hmm. situations just like that, where voters essentially um, are not appearing on the poll list and maybe simply by mistake, maybe they thought they registered and didn't, 
or maybe it's a technical error or a glitch in the system, they still have that ability to register on the day of the election and vote a normal ballot. Excellent. Would it be safe to say that um, these um, in, uh, changes um, have made it uh, easier for you, um, maybe even more likely that you can report um, the or certify would be the correct word, certify the election results uh, in a more timely manner than in the past? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, Michigan has had a, um, a pretty, I would say, I guess you could consider a high bar for provisional ballots in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in terms of voters getting a provisional ballot, you have to meet a certain number of criteria. Um, we're, we're giving vote, voters the benefit that I doubt on a lot of, uh, a lot of issues. And then, of course, uh, the same day registration process has really narrowed that down. And so, you know, the fewer provisionals that we have to deal with, of course, the more administratively, um, the more smoothly that process works on the certification end as well. So that's been a really encouraging change, both, I, I think, in terms of how voters, uh, the service to voters, but also on the administrative end with how smoothly the election runs. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's, that's very clear. Thank you very much. Um, this has yeah. been Lincoln Shorts. So.